Hey everybody, welcome back to Creating Scenery for Microsoft Flight Simulator. Today we are going to um, work on creating custom ground markings. Um, I'm editing this one, so it's, I mean, you know my editing abilities aren't that great. But um, anyway because there's a lot of jumping back from the sim and all that kind of stuff so I didn't want to do that in one big sitting so this video is going to show us how to make custom ground markings uh, such as uh, hold short runway signs not not the signs but the painting on the ground uh, and some miscellaneous you know tire marks uh, uh, jet st uh, parking stops uh, labeling and things like that so let's we're gonna dive in I want to first of all thank everybody who watches these videos who has subscribed to this channel you guys are fantastic um, I got like four more views until a thousand subscribers which is unbelievable I never thought that I would get that high so um, thank you very much uh, for all of those people that have been buying me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com thank you very much I mean that's you guys are you guys don't have to do that but you have chosen to you know and <laughs> It, I'm blessed. Thank you very much for uh, all you've done for this channel. Uh, I know it's flight simulator and physical science stuff, and f some of you guys don't like one or the other, but thank you very much for coming back and, and watching those videos. I am truly blessed by you guys. Thank you. So let's get started with custom ground markings. I'm going to take you into... Uh, the sim uh, reintroduce you to uh, creating your uh, not creating but copying stuff into your your material library and then uh, and then enabling that in the SDK and using them um, also um, gonna learn a little bit of Krita today on creating the, uh, some a texture look at some examples so I hope that you guys enjoy this video and hopefully I will see you on the next one when this one's done we're gonna open up our material library and here's my five alpha one materials and I'm gonna show you how to add again to that the materials to the library so later on in the video but I've added a few just so you can see uh, how these are added. So if we have this runway and we want the runway designation paint job on the runway, I'm going to go from scenery. By default, it will be at scenery. So we're going to go to apron and we're going to select the square apron and we're going to add. And that's going to put it on our ground okay now we need to replace the texture the default texture that's in that um, square so I'm gonna right click hit properties so I bring up the properties of that rectangle and I'm going to come over to my library and select my runway designation and I'm gonna drop that onto the surface so now we have our paint job but one thing that you're going to notice that you have to be careful. So we're going to drag that. Notice how it's going underneath this other apron. Let's increase its priority. Right now it's a priority zero. And so is our main apron. So I'm just going to hit the plus until it shows up. And there it is on top. Okay. Now we want to rotate that. You can use the gizmo by going to view gizmo rotate and then grab the handle and rotate it uh, graphically or you can come up to the properties and you can slide the slider until it's at the angle that you want okay 
So a couple different ways to rotate that. Okay, so it appears to be a little bit too large, right? I mean, that's 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 a big paint job. Um, these these paint jobs that are on the runways are a lot bigger than you might think they really are. Um, usually in pictures they look kind of small, but if you are on the runway, this is a pretty good size. And I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. Um, the height of the letters themselves are probably about 12 feet somewhere between 10 and 12 feet uh, 12 feet in, di in dimension all right so I'm gonna bring up a picture to kind of show you what I'm talking about is have a website that I'll talk about later on um, about runway markings if you want to be highly accurate but if you notice this gentleman in this picture uh, anywhere between you know the average size of a human anywhere between five foot nine okay and up all right I'm shorter than that but anyway uh, we can safely assume he might be close to six feet tall and if we measure him here and translate that to this you know six feet about right here so I'm probably saying that those this red is probably 10 feet okay so they're a lot bigger than you think they are all right we have it selected and I'm gonna come up to the scale in gizmo and type in point two and that changes the scale all right of the rectangle and then you can uh, you know find a vehicle or something like that to gauge the size all right now then you can move that to wherever on the the taxiway that that particular paint job happens to be okay so you'd probably have a whole short line sitting right here right matter of fact for fun what we can do is go over to painted lines and we can add a hold short line and I can hold down my left control click and click and obviously that's the wrong direction okay but we can rotate that as well let's rotate that around so that paint job would be kinda like that all right, and I'm not using a I'm not using a custom line with the back black background, but anyway, that's kind of the position that your hold short runway designation is going to be. All right, now let's say that we're at a parking space, and we have a um, let's just use the default line and let's add a default line control and let's say we have a parking space right here we have the yellow line that um, comes up to it okay and then there's stop blocks for different size of aircraft so do I have one of those in my library let's go to apron and yeah if you notice I have a triple seven Boeing triple seven here that I've put in for fun let's select that and let's go to apron square add and so it adds another one and let's drop that Boeing 777 into our surface and change its priority to one because it would be underneath right okay and let's change our Let's make that 180 degrees too, as well. All right, and let's uh, make that uh, 0 0.05. Okay. Now I'll explain this here in a second, but this is one of the quirkinesses of the scenery editor. But anyway, I'm dragging the bo the box, and let's say that that was the stop block for a triple seven or a 747 okay so you could add that 
all right now one thing that's really quirky about the SDK is the scaling of things all right if you if you notice that when I added this square okay when I first added the first uh, symbol it was a scale one and then I selected it and made it at point two right since the gizmo had point two on it after I scaled it and I didn't unselect and then change this back to one I had to make the scale of my second one relative to the scale that was actually showing up in this block in this box it's really annoying so after you add a rectangle before you add a new one or a new apron click outside of it and change that back to one then when you add another rectangle it will be scaled correctly all right it, it's really quirky I'm sorry about that but I didn't develop it <laughs> sorry. all right anyway um, another type of ground marking that you might have is some kind of designation on the actual taxiways of where um, uh, some other taxiways are or direction uh, you know we all know the taxi signs but sometimes they paint those on the ground so I have one here so we're going to do a square add so we have a new apron there and again we're going to have to change its priority to one because it will be below our main apron if we didn't okay and we're going to grab this uh, C upper right. That's what that really means. Not Okay, that name means something. And we're going to drag and drop that into surface. And then we're going to rotate that 180 degrees. Okay. And then we're going to give it a scale. Now, remember, before I added this one, I changed this back to one. All right. So now with this at one, I want to make this one tenth the size that it is on the screen. So I'm going to type in point one and hit enter. And if we zoom in, we have our sign. OK, I know that some of the quality looks kind of crappy, right? But if I turned off ground merging, it doesn't make any difference. Okay. Um, that's probably just because of my settings right now. Okay. But anyway, that's, that's a ground marking that would be at an airport. Uh, trust me, they do show up in my scenery. They show up nice and crisp. Um, I don't know what I have set here. All right. So. That's the basics of what you're going to learn is how to actually make these in your image editing software and bringing those into your sim. Okay. I have Krita loaded up. Remember Krita is a Photoshop clone for free. Link in the description where to download that. I love this software. It's great. All right. So I have created a new image it's a blank image right now okay and remember very important anytime that you create an image for Microsoft Flight Simulator it has to be the size has to be divisible by four okay so it could be 256 by 256 it could be 512 by 512 it could be 1024 by 1024 2048 by 10 uh, 2048 on up as long as it's a multiple of four so 2k 4k would be 4096 but you could also have different dimensions uh, width and height but each width or each height also has to be divisible by four. So you could have a 4096 by 1024. You guys get the picture? Now, for these 
for these ground markings that you're making, it's um, pretty important. I'm going to turn this on. There I am. Sorry. Um, it's it's really important that you got to remember when you're uh, when you're applying these aprons to your scenery, you are using the square. Okay. Uh, there's three ways of adding an apron default, which means that you can change the, yeah, it has a, you know, the size can be click, 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 you know, weird looking polygons, or you can do a square where you just add a square and it adds a square to the screen, or you can do a disc where it's a circle. Okay. When we're doing these ground markings, you want to choose the square and add the square. Now, here's the thing, is that knowing that, that you use the square in the SDK to add your apron, you want your images that you use as your markers, your ground markings, as a square. In this example, I have an image that I've a blank image that I've created that is 2048 by 2048. All right, it's square. Now, if we're gonna first make a runway paint scheme like I did, like I just showed you in the opening part of the video, with a red banner with white lettering, and you'll note you notice that that image was not square. They're more of a, a long rectangle, right? Okay. Now, this is how I do it. So you can scale and size things a little better. Is that if it's a long rectangle, I'll put it down toward the bottom. All right. If it's not square, I will cut the height in the shape that it's supposed to. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to create a new layer, paint layer, and we're going to make this call, we're going to call this red, okay, and I'm going to choose my red, okay, okay, so that's the, that's the red red of the editor, okay. Um, it may not be the exact red for the paint job. All right. And then I'm going to select my square tool. And I'm going to make sure that it fills with the back, the foreground color, which is red, and my, and no outline. And then I'm just going to come down and I'm going to make a red box down toward the bottom. Kind of like that. Now, if I turn off the background, this is transparent, okay? And you want that transparent because you don't want it to show up. If I left it white, then my ground marking, this por portion, this portion would be white inside that square, all right? But we want it transparent. Now, for the text, we're going to go to layer add a new layer, paint layer, and I'm going to call this uh, uh, text just for now, okay? And then I'm going to use my text tool, and I'm going to make a box inside of there. And in Krita, that brings up our text tool. I'm going to change the color to white, and I'm going to type in my text um, uh, this particular airport uh, let's just go 28 dash 10 there's no there's no left or right okay and click save and close the text all right now I want to scale that text so I'm going to use my layer transform tool in Krita and I'm going to make my text larger like this, okay? And then when I cl 
click the X, it kind of finalizes the look of it. All right. Now, you may not like that, so in Krita, you might want to make those bold letters. So I'm going to click the text tool again, make sure that that text layer is selected, double click, and I get this back. And I'm going to change that to bold. Now, it may not be the font. It may not be the exact font that's on the runway, but in Krita, you can change the font. So if you go to some site that has free fonts, which you'll find in the description of this video, find a font that is representative to the font that that particular airport is using. And usually they're standardized, but I'm not really sure about that. But anyway, find the font and load it to your system and you can use that in Krita. Now, one important thing about making ground markings that are words, when you add the rectangle to the scene, this is kind of hard to understand, but it's like you are seeing it from underneath. So the text needs to be backwards. So when you lay it down on your, your scene, it will stamp it to the ground in the correct orientation. So if I save this out and loaded it into my material editor the way it is, it would be backwards, even though it's right on the screen here. Okay, so what we're going to do is we are going to flip this text. So I'm going to go to layer and I'm going to transform and I'm going to, I'm going to rotate that. No, I'm going to flip it. Mirror horizontally. There we go. <laughs> I had to remember <laughs> which one I use. So I mirror, I mirrored this image horizontally so it's backwards. Now when I save this out it will be correct when I bring it into the sim. Alright? So let's pretend that we are done and let's go to file and export and we want to export this out as a PNG and I want to go to my scenery folder go into my scenery projects, go into alpha one, package sources, whoops, package sources, material library for five alpha one textures. There's the one that we used in our sample at the beginning of this video, but now we're gonna add a new one and we're gonna just call this runway 28-10 with no left or right designation period P N G and then hit enter so that exports this out to its own image and this part up here inside of our square will be transparent okay you with me so far all right now let's talk about colors for a little bit all right here I just chose a default red right um, one of the palettes inside of Krita and if I want to know what that color is I select that color and if I look at the hex it's FF and then four zeros FF zero 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 something like that so knowing the hex um, you can use that over and over right if you knew if you made a custom color now if we come over I have another image up I kind of which here it is I have another image that I got from a website and I'll show you that website real quick and that website is I, I probably won't put this in the description of the video so uh, www 
transpo.com slash airports slash color dash safe dash airfield dash and dash land side dash markings. <laughs> All right. These are actual, this is a company that develops paint for airports. And they have a, down at the bottom, they have a color safe color palette. All right. And it's a PDF and I downloaded that. And I extracted that image. And this is what it is. I extracted that image into its own, um, uh, what should I say? It's, it's, its own image. Okay. That way I have a palette that I can use to set my colors for working on this, this project here. All right. So if I want to look at the red, the default main red for Krita may not be the color in the real world. So I'll come over here and find the red that they actually use and use my teardropper and select the color of that particular red and it changes it up here. And then I can go back into my main project and I can if I wanted to I can create a new I'm just doing this for fun this is not part of the image but that's the red from the actual palette of the paint company all right so I would have made my rectangle this re red this red okay but this is also useful for looking at the different colors like for the yellow and the red and your blues okay so this palette will give us the actual colors on a computer monitor of the paints that they use on our at an airport you don't have to do it this way but that's the way I do it, okay? I use these swatches as setting my colors when I'm doing my uh, custom ground markings, okay? Any questions? Okay, I didn't get any questions. <laughs> Sorry, I'm such a geek. Now, what other kinds of ground textures can you make? Well, your only limitation is your imagination. All right, so let's let's open up. I got a whole bunch of them, but uh, let's open uh, another. Let's go to prototypes, and no, let's go back to here to custom materials. Are they in there? They're not in that one. Let me find them, and I'll be right back. Okay, I found them. All right, so I got a custom materials in my scenery projects that I, when I make one, I put them in here. So you see that I have a whole bunch. And remember, all the text is backwards in my images. But when you bring them into the sim, they're correct. All right, just know that. Any text needs to be backwards. But let's come down. Like here I have a, uh, a manifold cover man uh, a cover for a fuel box that one of my airports has and then gate numbers and all that kind of stuff and remember the text is backwards in your image now let's come down to one of these here all right so you can create like here I have some oil spills so let's open that up so I have a texture that has a transparent background, but I've made some oil spills. And that's basically just browns, blacks, and reds with uh, some transparency set. Okay. Um, opaqueness is, is brought down. So you can make a uh, 2K, 4K images of splotches like this. 
another one that I might have is we'll open um, this one is kind of a big long one if it if I remember if it's there there it is skid so open that up and this is a uh, what is it this is a 4k image where I've made a whole bunch of skid marks okay and then I lay that down on top of my I scale it pretty big and I set it on top of my runways or something like that to show touchdown areas all right most of you guys are better artists than I am so have fun making these ground textures but make sure that it's in a size that is a multiple of four so yes, you can you can use your imagination on making your own ground markings, all right? And bring those into the sim and use them. So let's open up another one, take a look. Here's some uh de-icing bay ground textures. Um here is a fuel box that I saw. So we'll open that one up. Uh, jet A fuel and then this was the marking on top and then I just put a MPW at the bottom for my physical world just for fun you can put your name or something in there just you know whatever you want all right so that is a this is a 2k image it's just a box transparent in this area and then I have a, a label that sits on top of the 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 fuel opening all right and then I just save these as PNGs and I put them in my material library and I'm going to open up my file explorer so here is my uh, five alpha one package sources materials and textures folder and here's the new one that we created right here the 2810 and let's go ahead and add let's pretend that we created some ground textures and we're going to add those into this so I'm going to come down to custom materials where I have those saved and we're going to bring that fuel box in and we're going to add in um, uh, I'm going to take a risk and bring in the skid and did I say the fuel box right so let's come up here find the fuel box hit my control got those selected and let's copy both of those into our 5 alpha 1 material textures folder so right click drag and drop those into there copy those and let's go into the sim and get these added to our library okay here we are back in the sim I'm at 5 alpha 1 and just trying to set this up a little bit all right now let's add those images that we just created okay and where are those well let's bring them up here and let's go into our scenery here 5 alpha 1 package sources material lib textures there they are so we're going to add in the runway 2810 that doesn't have the right and left we're going to add in the skid and we're going to add in the fuel box that we played around with okay so i'm going to come up to the material editor select 5 alpha 1 here in ohio my materials library select that so that's open Okay, and we are going to go to file new this is just like we did our our lines in the previous video exactly the same way and let's add in the fuel box so I'll type in fuel box there hit the black square go into our package sources 
materials, textures, and let's select our fuel box. Open. So that shows up in our view. We save and it adds it to our list over here. Okay. So we have our fuel box. Let's go ahead and add while I'm at it. Let's go ahead and add our new and let's add our runway skid. So let's call this skid. Hit enter and click the red the black box and select our skid image hit open and that should add it so save and let's go file new and add in what was the other one oh our runway runway 28-10 okay with no designations hit enter black box select our new text open save okay so now those are in our material library Ooh, big bus just showed up all right now just like we did in the opening sequence of this video we're simply going to <coughs> go over to scenery and we are going to add an apron and we are going to add a square okay and let's go ahead and what do I want to do here I'm trying to think now let's go ahead and leave with that let's add in our fuel box okay so let's add a square add and it adds it to our scenery remember the priority is going to be um, hidden open up properties change priority to one Take our fuel box, slide it onto our surface with the left mouse. Okay. Now see how see how pixelated that is. Okay. Usually it won't pixelate. Okay. I mean it is right now. Like I don't know why it's doing it today. Okay. But usually they show up pretty crisp. All right. Let's go to our gizmo view gizmo scale and let's type in 0.1 and that makes our scale a little smaller change our priority here see I'm getting some weird stuff going on here I don't know why it's doing that normally this shows up fine and I can't remember why Okay, in the process of trying to figure out what's going on. All right, notice, I don't know why it's doing this. It, it must, oh, there, see, it's nice and clear here. But when I move it over here, it gets pixelated. So I got something that I've done, in it, that I've done in this area. Because, let me show you a couple things, really. I know this isn't unrelated to this video, but... Um, you're going to get some quirkiness every once in a while. Now notice that this polygon, this apron polygon right here, is above the ground. Okay. But that second one is not. So I think that that's where... I think it has something to do the, with the photogrammetry of this area because you, I don't know if you've ever noticed when I load this airport up. Um, I'll have to I'll have to play with my airport boundary, okay? Because I think that that's what's probably doing it. Because I'm excluding all. All right. Terraforming. There we go. Terraforming. I didn't have terraforming on. Okay, that's why this was um, above the surface. All right. Now, let's select our fuel box. There we go. And move our fuel box. So, in some places it gets pixelated, but in some places it's nice and clear. All right. I know it wasn't my image because I have this in many of my airports and it's not pixelated anyway i digress 
All right, so let's change that scale to 0.2. And we have our fuel box. I think you guys get the point. Like I said, I'm not perfect, but, um, you know, depending on where I put it, it clears up. All right, so anyway, that's how we added our custom mark. Let's come over and what was the other one? Oh, our runway. Let's go to... Um, let's select change our scale back to one so we're not selecting that but if you guys didn't know you can control Z and undo anything that you've done okay now I'm going to go to add another apron which is here alright so I clicked outside so I didn't have anything selected so now my my scale is back to one and we are going to add in runway on left drag and drop into the surface change our priority to one we're going to move that on to our pavement okay and you can scale it you know just you can change the scale we're going to rotate it 180 okay move that so it's on top of our pavement so there's our new one that we made in Creta just a few minutes ago okay and I can scale it alright now let's go over to our runway okay I've zoomed out a little bit from our airport and I'm gonna show you how to use the skid mark that we did <clears throat> um, this particular airport I don't have runways on it yet okay for my guinea pig stuff so I'm just going to add an apron here to make it look like a runway so apron and we're going to do default so I can draw one and let's add so I'm going to hold left click hold left control and left click the mouse to make this Okay, so I got those four, hit enter, and then you can pick pick some kind of runway material if you wanted to in any of these. So I'm just going to select this one here and drop it on the surface, and let's just kind of rotate that 90 degrees or something like that, so that kind of looks like our antiquated runway. All right, now we're going to zoom out and we are going to add another apron and it's going to be a square add so it adds adds it right here all right remember it's underneath so change the priority to bring that above this apron here okay of course this would be a runway on your airport but um what we're going to do is go back over to our custom library select skid and drop that and skid is just this this line right here okay in the middle the rest of the image was transparent all right let's change the scale of this let's make it uh, 20 see what happens Let's make it even bigger let's make it 40 twice as big as that okay now let's even go bigger we can go a lot bigger let's go 80 there we go all right so I got this big image that gets painted and all I need to do is rotate it so I'm gonna select the gizmo and rotate our image and just kind of lay that down like that now you guys can make better skid marks than I can but anyway it kind of gives you an idea then when you zoom in you know you can put rubber skid marks on the ground of your runways you guys are better artists so I'm sure you can do a better job and you can just lay that out like that so that's a custom ground texture that you can make in your Krita or Photoshop or GIMP or whatever. As long as it's multiple by four in size, 
and uh, save that as a PNG and load that into your material library and use it over and over and over. Okay, so there it is. Custom ground textures. Hope you learned something from this video. Um, it's pretty standard on how you do this kind of stuff. Um, but keep working on it. Like I said, a lot of you guys are better artists than I can, and you can probably do your ground textures a lot better. I mean, there's other ways to do ground textures too, using, uh, using projected meshes and things like that. And we'll talk about those at another time. Again, thank you again for, uh, coming and, and watching and subscribing and all your support that you guys do you guys are awesome and uh, i will see you guys on the next video you guys have a great rest of the rest of the week a great weekend and be safe and we'll talk to you later see ya